Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be walking you through a few steps to create a butterfly like this one that I've done here. So I have released a previous butterfly tutorial over on my channel about uh, bright colours and everything and this time I'll be talking a little bit more about the actual butterfly itself rather than the colours used. So the kind of techniques and everything used for the body and everything of the butterfly. So the reference photo for this one is from Pixabay, I'm going to link it down in the description if you want to go and check it out and follow along with me. You can also view this tutorial over on Patreon and on my website. Have a check over there, see what tier it's on and hopefully you can create your own beautiful butterfly. But let's get straight into the body of this butterfly. So as you can see, I'm kind of building up the body, the base tones with a lot of blues. So for this particular butterfly, I went with layering blues and browns together to create a really nice dark colour rather than going in like straight away with dark sepia or something like that. I wanted to do this because I wanted it to look more natural and I could see brown and a few kind of bluey tones through the wings and everything as well and I wanted to mimic that through the body and also the blues that I'm layering down work incredibly well with oranges like they make them look so much more punchy and they really work well together oranges and blues so that's why I'm adding in blues and also it adds a little element of shine so if you've ever seen a body of a butterfly they're kind of fuzzy and in areas they are kind of a little bit smooth like they kind of got a little bit of a hard shell as well and there was a little bit of shine to this butterfly so the blues are kind of representing that as well for the actual texture of the body what you want to do is just make sure you've got some really nice smooth base layers i've gone in with the blues i've also gone in with a little bit of a lighter brown all of that kind of thing and then as you build up to your darker colors you're going to use a little bit more of a fur technique i'm going to leave a video in the description for you guys about how i do my fur technique with the pointing of the pencil and lifting it's going to give you a lot more in-depth structure and everything on how to do that but basically i use the same method as i do when i am creating fur on pet portraits or wildlife portraits and i create that all over making sure that i follow the direction that the body is going the body i kind of do in two halves and then i kind of curve the fur or the fluff inwards towards the very center of that little body structure there so then we're going straight on to the wings. I've also done the antenna, but they're pretty straightforward. It's just one simple smooth line and then two little bubbles on the end. I've also added in a little bit of orange onto the end there, which is going to help to tie in the wings and all of that. But as for the actual wings, you can see I've kind of put down a really light base of some, I think it was burnt umber or walnut brown. It was one of those two colours, or maybe even used two of them together. And then I've blended over the top with a little bit of the white. And I'm using the Holbein Soft White. It's my favourite white pencil to use. It's really nice and soft and it blends polychromos pencils, which I'm using here, really, really well. I'm going to leave the materials that I use in the description as well in case you want to view those. So this butterfly I have actually done in a different way because as you can see I'm using a solvent or in this case the finesse blender pen. I've done a review on this pen if you're interested to see how it works and the results of it I'm going to leave that in the description as well but I've used the blender pen, waited for it to dry and then I'm able to go in and add even more layers and you can see that where I've added the blender pen down I've added in some white pencil with that Holbein Soft White. The Holbein Soft White is quite an opaque pencil anyway but with the addition of the solvent and kind of breaking down those layers so you get a little bit more texture and tooth of the paper showing through it's able to go down a lot more opaque and get some really nice white um, areas on there i've then gone over those white areas with a glaze of orange because the brown areas were really warm tones so i wanted to make sure that i incorporated a lot of the orange which you're going to see through the tips and everything of the wings uh, you can see i'm adding the orange down now and as I mentioned, there was a lot of kind of blue tones throughout the wings as well, which is where I've added in some dark indigo. I've added it through the bottom there to create those really dark bits right on the very edge that you can see that I've just done. I used the walnut brown and I used some dark indigo and I think I even went in with some dark sepia. I don't tend to like to use a lot of those kind of blacks or dark sepias now. I tend to like to make my own colours as I mentioned by mixing the browns and the blues. But if I need to, or need to get an area really, really dark, I do go in with a little bit of dark sepia, sometimes some black as well. So don't be afraid to use those kind of darker colours um, rather than kind of mixing your own. But you do your own thing. If you like to mix colours, then you do that. 
You can see I'm using the blender pen here. I'm adding in a little bit more of the brown tone on the wings. You've seen me put down the orange as the base to get that warm tone showing through. And then I've gone in with those browns, adding in some dark indigo. And yes, I did use some dark sepia uh, just in the darkest areas to get them really nice and dark. You wanna make sure you get that contrast really, really nice. So as I said, don't be afraid to go in and use blacks or dark sepia or anything like that. You need to make sure that you get the contrast right, which is absolute key for realism. So as long as you've got that contrast, it doesn't matter what colors you use to get there. As long as you've got that distinguishable light area and that dark area and they're really playing off against one another that's all that matters here I've also gone in and added in some violets or purple into these areas here and that's just going to help to play with those orange tones so blues and purples really work nicely with the orange purples really really make it pop I like to use a combination of orange glaze and manganese violet together those ones I don't know why but they, they work really nicely with one another but onto the rest of the wings and I'm adding in the rest of the dark areas. I like to add in all of the dark areas on my butterflies first. Don't ask me why. I think it's just easier to do it that way. And I'm using some uh, dark indigo or maybe some indenthrine blue. I can't remember the exact colors, but as you can see, I'm adding in some blues and then adding in a darker blue blending a little bit here with a sky blue pencil. So rather than going in and blending a little bit with a white, I'm going in and blending with a lighter blue. That's just gonna help to keep the blue tones really nice and rich and blue looking rather than kind of desaturating them with a white pencil. And just layering those up, getting them colors all the way down onto the paper before blending with the finesse blender pen or the solvent. I like to work with a solvent on butterflies and these particular kind of like smooth looking objects because I just feel like it gives a really nice finish. So when you use a solvent on this particular kind of texture and you get that really nice kind of smooth velvety finish, uh, it's really nice and easy to add any kind of lighter details that you might find over the top because you get that kind of velvety finish with butterflies. They often have these really minute white details by using a blender you're able to add those over the top really easily rather than having to go and use something like a white gel pen or a chalk paint pen or something like that. I'm also adding in some purple onto these blue areas as I said, like I added it through the kind of um, brown areas of the wings. It's going to help to really play against that orange and it's really going to help that orange look really kind of punchy. So I don't know why I like to add all of the dark areas and why I find it easier to work this way but if you like to work this way as well, let me know in the comments why you prefer to work this way. Um, I like to add all of the lighter colours towards the end. I don't know whether it's just because it's more fun and then it's something to look forward to or what. But yeah, this is the way that I like to work with this. You can see I'm kind of doing the same thing on the kind of um, really light areas on the bottom of the butterfly just going in adding in those darker details and then finally going in with the orange colors so for this instead of going in and using a base of uh, ivory or a warm gray one or something i'm just going straight in with an orange this is just going to help to make the orange look really really punchy I keep saying that word and really pop and I'm then going in with some darker oranges and then coming in with the darker colors around some red as well uh, just continuing to get dark with those oranges and you can see just by having a few of those orange colors and not having a base or anything just going in with that orange straight off as a base they really do look a lot more vibrant and that's kind of what I explain in the previous butterfly tutorial if you want to check that out for a little bit more detail about all of that and then at the end here I'm just kind of going in and adjusting some of the contrasts and making sure that the butterfly looks as good as possible just adjusting a few things and that's pretty much it for this tutorial if you want to check out another one you can do so over on the right hand side there otherwise I really hope you enjoyed this one don't forget to check out my website and patreon for more in-depth real-time tutorials and I will catch you guys in the next one bye